So let's see if we can get that up. There we go. All right. What are we thinking? Wow, a couple of bands out here. Almost exactly what I'm predicting. Faze going for the Coast Band. I kind of expected a chalet from them, but that was the other one I thought was possible. Bank makes a ton of sense as well from TSM to come out here. Uh, it's been a weird one for them this event, so I, I don't mind them taking it off the game here. Coastline for a map. Again, I thought we would see it for TSM. It's been really, really strong from them, but TSM will take the other option instead. They'll go for the chalet pick. I think this is going to be a really strong map. They've been undefeated at SI, beating Fury. 7-5 and then Liquid 8-6. They did drop it during the qualifier to one shot, but it still seems like a really strong map. And then Villa coming through for FaZe Clan. Three game win streak. They lost it to SSG the first day of groups, then beat Rogue, Cyclops, and Sonics in their lower bracket run. This has been a really strong map for them the entire SI. Historically, Villa's been a strong map for FaZe for a long time as well. Back in Brazil, obviously, it's a very different landscape, but realistically, you can translate a lot of that over. I think that the map veto, just off the face of it, looks like it's doing quite well for TSM, if I'm going to be honest with you. And I'm a big Latam shill, but I know that TSM are that team that put a lot of work in behind the scenes. They've got some brilliant backroom staff, and if there's one thing that those guys are going to look to do, it is going to look to try and counter and to try and just be one step ahead. So for me, that first map of Chalet, that's a little bit of an alarm bell because it's not a brilliant map for FaZe, at least it hasn't been this SI. And then you think about Avila, a map that FaZe have played quite a couple of times, not come up against too much obstacle. There's a lot of potential for counterplay. All right, gentlemen, I'm putting you on the hot seats. Let's do predictions and we start with my big brain. Well, I mean, both Hi, of, I'm both right these, here. Come on now, Jake. You're, big boy. You're not the big brain. I think both these teams have been crushing it so far at this event. <laughs> um, FaZe Clan obviously have done the amazing uh, lower bracket run with their attacks. They've been really, really nice. But TSM have looked flawless in my mind through the upper bracket. Their game against Empire just secured it. I know they lost, but they still played so damn well. And with FaZe Clan's mistakes on defense, uh, I'm a little worried for them in this one. I got to go for the North Americans. How could I not? Okay, well, two of my big boys with the big brains as well. There we go. That I nicer? Mean, he, he, I, okay. I'm just going to remind him he doesn't have a shirt <laughs> saying it, but, you know, we'll just we'll, we'll leave it be for now. Here's the thing. Other than the North American bias that exists here, hmm. for FaZe Clan, those concerns do permeate a little bit. But the thing that I think we're overlooking, gentlemen, is map three. We haven't even been able to talk about Cafe being a map that for both squads has been incredibly potent. For FaZe Clan, it's way more. I don't even think they've lost it so far over the course of this tournament. They are 5-0 and on that bad boy. And if we need to go to it, that's a map where TSM, you, you know, is going to meet them head on. If this were to be a 2-0, I'm giving it to TSM. But if we were to go to three maps, I have zero clue who's going to walk away with this one. I'm going to come in with a scorcher. I'm going to give you an X okay. on to you. Oh, no. I am going to say, and I'm going to stand on this, that TSM haven't beat a great team yet. They've come up against Ooh. good opposition, what? but they haven't truly Ooh. been pushed. Empire was the furthest they got, and they lost that game. Liquid, it was 8-6-8-6. They dropped a map to Furia. I believe that FaZe have been in some absolute wars here, and the Latam bias is going to come out right at the end. Ooh. <laughs> Jake, I guess well, no. The, the, the only <laughs> counter for that is that TSM have yet to lose to a Brazilian team since they've been at this Invitational. They've beaten Furia twice. They've beaten every single team except for MIBR, who are no longer here, and FaZe Clan. Liquid fell to them. Team one, I think, as well at one point during the bracket. So not the best case scenario so far for Brazilian teams against TSM. Ooh, well, our analysts have spoken. Gentlemen, thank you so much. But our teams are ready. There was 20 teams. Now there's three. But only one can be world champion. Who is going to the grand final? Ace and Dez, take it away. Let the lower bracket final begin. Thank you very much, Jackie. Welcome over to the casting desk. I'm Des, this is Tim, and Tim, these two teams really going to war here for a chance to lift that hammer against Empire. I mean, they are fighting hard over it, Des, but I'm not sure what the big... Well, I've got the hammer. I've got it, Des. Hang on, I've got it. It's, it's there. No, I've got it. I've got I've it. Got it. Tim, that's not the hammer. The, what? It's a hammer. It's a hammer, it's but not the... A, a lot less work to get it. I've got to say that. <laughs> you haven't got to sit and play a best of three and then potentially a best of five against Empire. I'll give you that much, but... Have, have I raised the hammer today? <laughs> You've raised a hammer today, Tim, but the hammer is the one that these teams are still fighting for. This is going to be a screamer of a series, Tim. Major champions from Sweden back in this place just three months ago, coming up against TSM that we have had the pleasure of casting now probably five times, yes. I think, Tim. 
Well, we've seen what these guys can do. You at home have seen what they can do. You've seen Merck go nuclear on the entry. You've seen 4K after 4K out of Bolo. Today, we've got to see more of that, Tim. And even then, it might not be enough. Well, we were speaking about TSM the other day, and I think they've been quite an interesting team in that the success has been has come about for me from a really strong core. So you've had Achieved, who has been just relentlessly grinding away and picking up important kills, never really necessarily the centre of attention, but exactly when his team needs them. You've got Bolo, who's been bringing the, the panache, the flashy plays. He's been hitting the 3Ks, the 4Ks. He's been difficult to nail down. And then you've got Merc that's just been absolutely solid in terms of game sense and entry. He's just been so difficult for teams to shut down, always making the right decision. And because each three of them, it's been like this this trifecta of a core where they're all bringing something different and it's worked really, really well for TSM. But you'd better believe that they are going to need all three of them on top form today against the phase side, which for me, I agree with what the analysts have said, one of the best team playing teams that we've seen so far at the Invitational. Let's quickly rifle through those bands as well here, Tim. We've had a couple come through that are quite interesting. More on the attacking side than the defensive one. Looking at that Nomad, banned by TSM. Something that FaZe have ran in about 70% of their rounds on this map, so that makes complete and utter sense. The one that many look at and might scratch their heads is going to be that Habana. We're used to seeing things like the Thermite, the Ace, to open up the Mezzanine Wall. That's clearly not going to be a thing here, but in every single round that TSM have played on attack, Chalet, at this competition, they have brought Habana. They are not an ace team. They're not really, sorry, they are an ace team. They play ace alongside the uh, Habana on this map. There's no Thermite, for example. So personally, a really good target ban and the opposing pick that's been made on the other side is gonna be the Maverick. You don't see TSM play this. So again, small differences already being shown between the two teams. We are gonna get into it then, Desi. Ready? That's the only question. Is Tim, if, if I had to quote you, I was born ready, Tim. There we go. That's the sort of energy that we need. Everybody at home, I'm sure, is more than ready as well. And we get this lower bracket final underway. Reminder of the stakes. The loser goes home. The winner goes to this afternoon's grand final where Team Empire awaits. They almost don't come any bigger than this, Des. I will, we've got one more game to go today, but this is huge for both of these teams. TSM versus FaZe, round one, and it's going to be a kitchen defense to start us off. Honestly, looking at both of the series today, whether it's FaZe versus Empire or TSM versus Empire, I was like, man, we need that. And I think these two teams having to face off to see which of those two series we get, you could not write a better storyline. FaZe blasting their way through. We've already seen them do this throughout the competition a couple of times, Tim. Where that kind of fast opening, we've seen a couple of other LATAM teams do it as well, can sometimes catch teams completely off guard. That's it, just avoid you getting challenged on that double window whilst you're trying to take out the, uh, the door there, the Castle Barrier that goes through in towards Piano, just using a multitude of utility to get that cleared out very quickly. And it just makes Merck's spot that little bit more dangerous when he's trying to play in and around that area. For the time being, phase, they're going to be looking for the top floor clearance here. Geo Merck, they're going to be the particular sticking points inside of Piano. Faze wanting to get the vertical angles, wanting to use that hatch to try and pressure the site underneath. Not got themselves established inside of the building yet, but it looks like a little bit of discomfort on the side of TSM, and Bullet has now found his way in towards challenging that dining room door. Yes, they've all started out on the south side here as well, Tim, so they want to get control on the below, open up the office wall to give them the sight lines into the upstairs and just stop TSM getting a little bit cheeky from above. Outside of that, it's all about the dining wall on the downstairs to give you an angle, a Route 101, straight into sight behind the bomb chassis and looking for a plant. They have got two smokes to play behind as well, so they can opt to plant inside that or use it to smoke off the single door that goes into West Main or looking in towards Kitchen. So options exist for the side of phase and for TSM it's about running that clock down. They've already got two or three members that have been involved in gunfights here. They've got three smoke canisters to sit behind. No C4s mind you. So everything is going to hinge on Achieves not going down early on this smoke. 
Drawn in just going on there to locate some of the members of the defence. Finding them on the West Main stairs. In goes a nade. We're going to find Great a kill. It's going to actually be Bolo. He manages to find cameraman first, though. And the nade just tra trades that out. Geo gets Astro, and it's all falling apart for FaZe as the rush coming in towards site is not going to work. TSM are ready for it, Des. They're going to cut them down one at a time, and we're going to find ourselves in a one versus four. It's all up to Cyber. He's taking damage. They know where he is. They shut him down. And TSM, they get round number one. Yeah, Bolo there taking a bit of a risk. If he'd been watched from Mezzanine, he could have found himself going down, but I think he wins that one versus one, charges the library stairs and gets the side angle onto FaZe, who have got all eyes towards the site. Really good shutdown and using that mobility, playing a bit of a risky game, you might argue, to get that first round away from FaZe on a site that we don't often see. Thinking about what we've seen mostly on this map, Tim, that has been the site that I'd argue has played probably second least. We see Bar and Gaming as the primary. More and more teams are playing into Snow Mobile and Garage on the downstairs. Massive Office then tends to creep in, and then you get the kitchen and dining. So starting with the offsite here, they've now still got two strong sites they can rotate through, Bar Gaming and the basement. And just see. TSM, very happy with the first round there. There's going to be a lot more needed from them as we go on, and Bar is going to be the second site. We're going to be heading, staying on the same floor, but heading across to the opposite side of the map. So what are we going to see out of FaZe? I would expect to see FaZe coming in and looking for a little bit more top floor control this time, Des. They tried to push directly to site last time. Kind of hurt them. They got hit from the stairs. They got hit from multiple angles. Made their life a little bit of a nightmare, and I think FaZe will have learned from that, and they're going to try and probably get get themselves inside of the solarium side of the map, sweep across through master and office, and then come and try and dislodge the player on mezzanine. Now, previously, the player on mezzanine, we've seen Bolo playing there quite a lot, but he's yep. on the smoke. I'm not sure we're going to see him in that position. He may well be on blue stairs instead. Although, did, did no, you, he's there. He's no, there. he will be there. Did you see Canadian's video by any chance on Twitter the other I day? I did, yeah. But you For those of you who have moving him from behind his Essentially, shield. it was a number of clips of Bolo being behind the shield in this position across NAL, across their Side and just Canadian on stream being like, you cannot kill this guy behind the shield. It pops up and like kills three of you and it's unbelievable to stop him. It's a full on 30 to 45 second round. Fully recommend you go to Troy's Twitter and take a look at that. But Bolo is a menace behind these shields. So let's keep an eye on it. Normally teams will try and bring along things like a capital, at least from what we saw in the NAL, or nade him out from below. If you can get below, that is of course, given it is the site, or you look to go from that office window. You have options to play with to try and shut him down, but he just he dances around exploring so well and it's so hard to pin him down. Bullet taking out two of those nades with him in his back pocket as well because Merck has found a very cheeky early little peek. It's a big start for TSM in round two here and FaZe just looking a little bit slow to wake up today and they're going to need to make sure that they're a bit quicker if they want to start getting kills. Gio is going to keep himself in the corner. We've seen this set up quite often from TSM. Sometimes you'll just have the player Blue Stairs and Mezzanine. TSM, they go for the, the full works, the full package. They get the man inside a library as well and when you create that sort of triangle, it makes it very difficult to move any of them. You can't breach the wall because everything gets shot off. You can't get into library because of Bolo. Merc's there to protect from office. It's just an absolute nightmare to break down. You've got to find a way to get that first kill. Once you can get a corner gone, it gets a little bit easier to take individual pieces. Oh, he's pieces. gone. And that is a big piece to take out of that defense. Souls is going to find Bolo with a nade. No one eye on side, Des. Maybe just allowing for a little bit more flexibility to get those throwables in towards him. Yeah, Gio is looking to be alive. He dropped back down through the hatch. Yes, Bolo has gone. They've removed two of that kind of three-point triangle, which means Merck has got to fall ever so slightly deeper here, as you can see, down towards the basement. Achieved is doing what TSM always do on this defense, by the way. He's holding up towards dining side and then starts moving his way down as the round progresses. The problem is his team are getting hammered on site here. Child is down to half a chief. Steps up and gets a big 2K. I spoke about that flag, making a three. Absolutely nuclear from the north side and leaves Souls. Yes, he's got a bit of a clutch got on him, but the Grim Reaper of TSM stand in side of the site. Achieved, Charla, 25 and 50 HP respectively. So a couple of bullets from Souls, and this round can be done and dusted with. He's got about 40 seconds to play with as well, Tim, so I would argue, not in a massive rush, he can take a few extra seconds here to get himself in an ideal position, but Achieved is waiting a huge 4K in the rounds. If you remember at the beginning of this day, game, Des, I picked out a few of the TSM players, and I said Achieved, his greatest strength throughout this Invitational has been finding kills and big moments, important kills, exactly when his team needs them. And that was a great example. I you're going to continue yeah. seeing it. I'm quite happy to just put it out there. I'll say, I guarantee you're going to continue seeing that from Achieve today. If there is a moment in your mind where you think, TSM really need a kill here. Oh. 
and a two or three K comes in, it'll be achieved every single time. The thing is, normally he'll be playing, like I said, in dining and kitchen, West Main. He'll work his way down through to kind of 90, the hallway. And that's where he'll go for his challenge in towards yeah. lobby. But here, the small difference was he was up on the second floor. So maybe a phase of look back at this game and gone, okay, we know what he likes to do. We know where he positions himself. That's all well and good. It's going to kill you if it comes down to him coming from a different direction. So drones could be set up. If they're not watching the top floor, he's going to get a stinging flank like that and end the round very quickly. Because up till that point, FaZe were in command. They'd got themselves two good kills. They'd forced Geo back to site. Everyone else was penned in the downstairs, which meant FaZe had plenty of room to work with. But that flank was fantastic. And we've seen a couple of big flanks out of TSM over the last week, to be fair. Tim, think about that Vigil 3K from Merck on Bank. Yep, absolutely. I think, I mean, that was just beautiful, wasn't it? Um, Let's flank your seal year. Yeah, absolutely was. I think I think you're right there, Des. We're only two months in, but I can't see that being bettered um, in the calendar year, at least. And I would say it probably already goes down as the best in the competitive year that is coming to a close here at the Six Invitational. Mm. But I think, for me, FaZe Clan just struggling to get control of the map here. They're getting in, they're taking some rooms, they're sort of getting the top floor, but they're not controlling it. And that's the big thing. It's all right getting boots on the ground it's all right finding your beachhead but you've got to lock it down you can't let achieve come and smash you on the flank for a 3k because look what happens it's going to be 2-0 yeah. simple as that phase need to start doing better with that there's options for them I, you know i don't believe they'd be necessarily playing the nomad anyway where she available i'm not saying that's you know, they've done without that and they're getting hit on the flanks. It's not the case. There's ways and means of doing this without that operator and they need to start doing it. It's the simples, it's the flank drones, it's holding the flanks, it's making sure somebody's there to react. You can't ignore it because again, 70% of rounds, they rely on the Nomad to protect against that sort of thing. The player that plays Nomad is very aware he's not playing Nomad and instead has got to do something different. The rest of the team might be still thinking, okay, well, he's got the flank covered off. So just these small changes. Again, you can see how the bands can come in huge at the right time when they are targeted. And both teams have got those attacker-sided target bands. So we'll see how things progress. But a 2-0 for the defenders to start a map off. Shall I off, Tim? That feels unusual because this has been one of the most attacker leaning maps that we have seen for the longest time ever since its rework and launched back into competitive. It has been very attacker leaning. I believe at this competition it's a bit He's more balanced. It. He's oh, missed Merck's him. Mr. Head achieves going to farm from above anyway. That's fortunate cover. <laughs> Merck's just like, thank you, Angel achieved. Can I just say, TSM really needed a kill there, Des, because otherwise they're going to lose that entry. And look who pops up, achieved. But Souls, the number one support so far, oh. as we've been calling him. He gets in, he's getting the diffuser down, Des. FaZe have been doing work. It doesn't matter that oh, Cameraman swing. got lost in trophy because they've got trench wall open, they've got inside a site, and they've got the diffuser down, stunning TSM, who now have to fight back. And it's getting difficult, 2v2. Cyber finding Merc down at the bottom of West Main stairs. Damage onto Bolo. He's just Duking left and right, he's trying to find anything he can, but there's nothing in sight for him. Nitro goes out, gets one. Geo 1v1, oh! but Cyber finds the kill. And Faze able to lock down their first round on Shally. You go from an Achieve 4K into a Cyber 4K. You just know you're walking into a battleground, Tim. I mean, I, I'm as excited as your voice sounds because <laughs> this game, I'm just... I, 45, it's a 45 round potential here. This. Oh, don't get me too excited for that, Tim. Don't Honestly, get me too excited. The thing is, we were talking about the bands upstairs and we saw them come through and we were like, man, if this gets through to that third map of Cafe, hoo -hoo, phase of 5-0 on that map, but many have been talking about tier 7, how good they are on it. It's, it's just one of those series, and I think it's fair to say, out of these last three teams here, all three are worthy and potential winners. Look at how close TSM were yesterday against Empire, for example. It was a fantastic game that we got to see. FaZe are coming off the back of a Sweden major win. They've been looking great throughout the competition. I just come back to that stat that someone referenced across 200 tournaments where there was a lower bracket, only 8% of the time did the team coming from the lower bracket win. So if you're a betting man, you're with Empire. Those of you in the chat have definitely got channel points going on Empire later on, I'm sure, off the back of that. But neither of these two teams can be counted out just yet. Ta interesting timing. Tactical pause coming in from FaZe. They get themselves the first round, but maybe think, right, I mean, it was a 1v1, Tim. It was a 1v1. It was getting the diffuser down while she were losing men elsewhere. I think TSM just took their eye off the ball a little bit there. You know, yeah. trench gets opened, West Main Wall gets opened. you got to be thinking there's a plant going down here because I've spoken about that exact plant before. If you've got those two walls open and Pillars has been cleared out, which it was, it was all down to Bolo inside of blue. 
it's practically impossible to stop that plant because you've got cover on to connector, you've got cover on to blue, and you can't get round the back of the wall unless you've got somebody on hatch, and there was just too much fighting going on on the mid floor for anybody to pay attention to hatch. I heart back to what Lycan said to me in a conversation last week because at one point SSG were at 4-4. They won the round and went 5-4 on the attack, and then they called a timeout, and I was like, right, I'll ask him about this later on. And he explained a couple of things. One, the comms were getting a little bit crazy. They were a bit too excitable. They were a bit too low. One way or the other, in SSG's case, they were a little bit too high. That timeout gave them a bit of room to breathe and get things back to a resting level. Want you at the middle, not too low, not too high. The other side of it was, okay, I've seen a couple of things in the attacks and the defenses that have gone against us here. Here's what we want to work on for our next cash attack, for example. So they know what it is they're looking towards when they call those timeouts. It, it looks weird to us as viewers, maybe, and as casters, but the teams know exactly why they're making those calls. Oh, absolutely. Like you say, you know, Ritalia there obviously seeing something that uh, that he thought he could add to the party. The party will continue, Des, for us at least. Party? For us, it's a party for us. What party do you step into when it's a slaughter like this against each other, Tim? We've had two 4Ks so far. It's been an absolute... Ooh. It's been a nuclear game. It's an event. It's an event. A, a spectacle. Heart. The greatest show on earth, Des, and <laughs> continues. Round four, and we're going to have no kills yet. Fears not getting themselves inside of the building. TSM, they are looking to try and find a little bit of that momentum back. As I say, they just struggled last time to hold on to sight. I think um, they just let FaZe get away from them a little bit. They took their eye off the ball. They were focused on the mid floor. This time, the mid floor is all that matters to them. It's going to be a kitchen and dining site. We saw this back in round number one. TSM were able to lock it down. They were able to lock it down pretty ah, easily. Him. Merck and these entries, man, he's absolutely nuclear and he's still going to find his way back to site here as well, despite being in library, despite cameraman having the cross. He's walked away there with his life. Not a lot of it, mind you. He's only down to about 40 HP or so, but you'll take that to get the entry because, Tim, look at what they removed. They got rid of the ace, and when you're attacking this site, it is so critical. The last thing you want to do is send your Maverick up to that dining wall and have him start Mavericking, getting it open because someone could come down library stairs, which then means your team needs to have control of more of the map. They've gone for it here because they have no other choice, but it's far from ideal. You'd normally want the ace to get two on the downstairs, one on the above, and that's your way into site. Maverick doing the work to try and open up the fire. He's so one. careful. He is being very, very careful, trying to just get some access in towards site. Doesn't want to lose his life doing it here, Souls. Does have Diffuser in hand, so he's going to be the one looking for a plant at some point. I'm not sure if Faze are just maybe again, Des, trying to surprise TSM here and get themselves into a position where they make a lot of noise over here and then slip in behind and get that Diffuser down. Ball was being turned on the spot back and forward at the minute because he knows that wall has been oh, breached, Tim. but he knows that they're trying to push up above him. He's being held by cameraman as well. This is the plant that stung them last time because Bolo, if you remember, got the kill onto him and then went down library stairs and hit them from the side, got a 2K and basically ended the attack then and there with a joint shot coming in at long range from another member of TSM. Sol's going to find Merp before Charla trades one back the other side, and there's a frost map, Tim. You know that sound all too well. Stay into trophy window. Down he goes to achieve up on the north side of things. Sol's with one back at three versus two and about 30 seconds to play. You can hear the feeling in my voice when players go into those frost mats. It's cameraman West, last alive, looking for kills, looking for anything inside of round number four. He's one versus three. TSM done the smart thing, dropped themselves back to site, and they're just going to sit and wait for the next 15 seconds. Doesn't have to Diffuser in hand, unlikely to find kills here, and it's going to make life difficult. I think we will see this timer oh, tick away. away. He's unlikely to drop onto site. There's just no need. There's bulletproof cameras. They know exactly where he is, Des, and TSM, they're just going to wait it out. They will, yeah. I mean, like I say, he's miles away from this one. Notes as well, by the way, we didn't touch on it in the round itself, but cameraman there, after their timeout, is bringing the gridlock. They're clearly really scared about these flanks, and even when they have the tracks down inside of the library hallway, you've still got cameraman sat on mezzanine waiting for the bolo to go for the cross. I don't know if it's because they're fearful of, okay, if you gunshots will come out, it'll destroy the tracks and they'll run down anyway, therefore we've still got to commit a man. The question then really comes, is it worth bringing the Nomad in that game, the Nomad? The gridlock in that case, just stick him on the flank and have him hold it separate. Put a cam there if you're really that bothered about it. But in all in all, another good round for TSM on that site. So far, completely avoiding the top floor. We're going to head now into bar and gaming, as you might come to expect. And as of right now, Tim, Cameraman is switching off the operator. So like I said a second ago, if you're going to hold it with a gun anyway, the tracks are basically useless. He's going across to bring in the line instead. No impact on site, really, from first there. They managed, they got the wall open with the Maverick Souls doing a good job there, but they just never really managed to, and I've spoken about this throughout the tournament, disrupt the defenders. They never moved TSM around. They never really forced them too drastically out of position. They tried. They tried. And then Cyber jumped straight into a frost map. 
part of the problem. A, a big part of the problem, because he was their flank. He was the one coming in through Trophy, because you were saying, like, a bit of noise over here. Yeah. Then, bam, coming on the backside. But Cyber was just well, not expecting there to be a frost map there. A little bit of mis droning ultimately cost them what could have been a big flank, given he got a 4K a couple of rounds ago. In fact, back in round three, it was. So he did some magic work back then, too. Either way, Bar Gaming, we step into then, Tim. And I imagine here we'll see something similar coming out from the side of FaZe. They did a great job at forcing the members of TSM back. They got the nade kill onto Bolo. They nearly killed uh, Geo on his drop back into sight. So TSM know what pressure feels like here. Bolo on the Wamai should be able to lock things down a bit better than before because last time he was on the smoke. Clearly not acknowledging he is going to be a target. That Wamai being on side with those magnets in hand is a way to keep himself a lot more secure up on Mezzanine. Frostmats are being placed once again. Absolutely no surprise to see Jala bringing him along. And you look at that, Des, and you think, that's just in the middle of the room. Where's the problem going to be there? <laughs> but as we've said countless times, these ones that get put out in the open are often the ones that find their mark and get people snapshotting them. It's because players are going in, ADS, Correct. ready for a fight, and you miss it. You don't see it on the floor. Achieved, he's not going to be missed. He's going to find himself losing about 45 HP there to a couple of shots that have reined in. Needs to be careful for the remainder of the round. And FaZe Clan right now still trying to deal with this library. They managed to kill Bolo last time. The triangle is still, I said that, Weird dinner. The the triangle is still in place. Well, it's a triangle. Find him. It was it's, just it's, the way I broke it into two words. It's sounded triangle. Like, what's wrong with that? I think it's all right. Is it? Shall yeah. we go with it? Okay. Opening kill. Bullet's going to go with a nade onto Merc. He's going to find himself one, and that is part of that triangle being taken apart. There's Blue right. Stairs. Now it's getting weird. <laughs> Blue Stairs getting taken out. Leaves Bolo and Geo. And you can already see, look at what happens. Bolo has to move. He has to react. That's mezzanine clear. But Bolo achieved getting in with kills when needed again. We're both traded out again. So two members of uh, FaZe stepping in and getting a couple of kills. Bat neutralizes those two. A two versus two. Charla into one more. Oh boy, oh boy, it's the battle of the supports. It's the portal combat, Tim. You've got Souls coming up against Geo, Geo, and what can he do? He's rotating his way down from this library stairs. Souls spooked ever so stuck it. by that C4 coming out. He could have, but he panicked a little bit once he heard that come through. He's got so much time to play with him. He's got the site in his control. He hasn't got a panic, but Souls wins those out. Time and time again, Clutch Master, Plant Master. Souls is just so good in those final situations. I watched him yesterday on Cafe when he got the diffuser down and he had one pushing him from Lumber, one pushing him from Cigar. You shouldn't win in that situation. You've got and one he just on either does. side of you. But you will notice that his decision-making is just infallible. It is just correct every single time. Every choice he makes gives him the advantage. There, he could have stuck that diffuser, absolutely. Would it then have potentially changed Geo's movements? Maybe. So he comes off it and he just holds his angle. He's got time, he's confident, and it was beautifully played. But FaZe doing much better there, Des. Really able to remove that problem area from TSM. Merc going off the stairs as the opening kill was big. It forced the rotate, it moved Geo. It just makes TSM's life much more difficult. Bit of a hot take here, Tim, but I think often what you'll find, if not for the usual suspects of players like Nesk, Parlo, you know, occasionally Mo Muzi, Pino sneaking to the picture as well, outside of those big names from LATAM, you don't really get as much hype or focus around some of the more backline players that you see in LATAM, right? Think about in Europe, we're always talking about Breedy. Shepard slips into the conversation as well. Yeah, Souls at this point, I would wager. Best in the world. One what, of the best in the world. One of the best in the, the, best in the I'm not going to go as far as saying any of those three are the no. best on their day. He's of course, up there with them. Vary, but he is up there in terms of quality with all three of those Absolutely. players, I think. He is lights out. We saw it at the uh, Sweden Major three months ago. We're seeing it here once again at SI that he just puts up the big numbers. If you remember my first words written in a document, the prep document that we did about Souls for the Sweden Major back in November, my first words written there were absolute clutch master. This guy is unflappable in one He did write unflappable, and I was like, that's still a word that I hear, and I just think that's just such a strange word. He doesn't flap. Like triangle. Triangle. Um, he's, he's just... He, he's just, and he's been doing it for the longest time. He's just so calm, so patient, oh my makes God. the right decisions. Merck managing to get himself involved in the entry again. He lost it last time. He comes back strong and manages to take down Cyber. How do you stop this guy? He was plus 23 coming into this competition, into this game, sorry. Number one in the whole tournament. The nearest player on the side of FaZe, who is very quickly slipping down the ranks the number of times that he's being caught out, is Cyber. He's at plus 10. No one on FaZe is in the top five, whereas on this side for TSM, they're sat right in 
in number one with Merck doing the hard yards. He's having an unbelievable tournament. Remembering again that coming into this, they were saying, look, we've moved Merck off entry. That's now a bolo roll. Merck's going into more of a flex once we can play the IGL. Geo in hot water here. Achieve finding one back to so a 5v3. It's not the end of the world. They've lost a bit of HP, but you'd rather lose some HP than lose the man altogether. Geo still managing to hold on in the corner of library for the time being. There's going to be a nade going in. Not sure if it will get the job done. No, it will not flash as well. And they just don't feel confident on pushing in here, Des. They know that they've still got mezzanine to contend with. They know that it is still a problem. Bullet, he's down on the double window. And right now, FaZe just look a little bit out of ideas. They can't move any of these TSM players again. It's that same situation. They can't disrupt them. They can't move them. Charla, he just dances away from the explosives, keeps himself inside of the supply room there. Achieve just holding a nasty little angle from the main stairs as well. They're not panicked on time just yet, but someone at Three. some point will have to step in and challenge Geo. And Souls, I want to see that high risk, high reward play. Go for it. He's on one HP. You land a single bullet and he's going down. I know he's got the angle, but you can take that firefight as soon as you step in. The problem is Bolo will likely swing at exactly the same time, so it's a big risk to take. And instead, he's going to head his way up towards the roof. We're in that last 50 seconds or so at this point, Tim. It feels like another TSM round, so a 4-2 half. Decent start. Unusual for FaZe not to want to aggress in that sort of situation. The nade goes in, the flash goes in, and somehow Geo still survives. Nobody pushing in behind it. And usually FaZe, I would expect to be going straight in through that window looking for the kill. Two versus five, time ticking down, and it's looking very unlikely here for FaZe. As Sol gets himself caught up in a goo mine there. He's trying to mix it up, trying to take a different attacking angle, and he's just playing into a shield here. He's going to get peaked. Simple as that. Merc using the utility to its fullest, finds his kill, and it's all up to Bullet. He tries to pull on. It's going to be a flawless round. Ball up nice and easy. TSM. I don't think they moved from the beginning of the end to the, to the beginning of the round to the end there, does. Not much, did they? No, pretty static overall. Found that 3K very early on, and that was basically the round shut down and closed out. And I was thinking about it watching the round. I was, I was looking at Geo, and there was a bit of a conversation on the desk. You know, Souls, Geo, you've got two great players here. All the praise naturally going in towards Souls. I feel kind of sorry for Geo because he's a man there who's sat in the spot. Great where job. You're going to get naded. You are going to be the primary target in that round. But where he's kind of come into his own having some firefights is normally when the rest of the team have died. Otherwise, Merc, Achieved, and Bolo are just nicking these threes and four Ks constantly. Merc, I think it's Achieved, sorry, is sat at nine and two right now in this game. He's going absolutely wild. So in the back line, you don't get much room to get very involved, either for Charla or for Geo, and yet they're still four and four and five and three. I'm really glad that we're going to have an inter-regional final. We've got that guaranteed. Oh, yeah. We've already got EU there. Yes. Latam, we love you. Latam, we love you. We love it when there's really region do. versus region. And it's, I'm looking at this now and I'm thinking, yeah, we've either got EU, Latam, EU, NA. I don't really mind which way it is. All that matters, Tim, is it's EU versus someone. Exactly that. <laughs> I don't really care who wins overall. I mean, you know, I asked for an NA resurgence and they've certainly given me that at the tournament. I love Latam as always. And obviously EU is my home region. So I, I feel like I'm winning anyway, Des. You know, I'm the sort of guy that's going to find the positive in it no matter what happens. But I'm just looking at these two going at each other now. And I'm thinking, what a final we are going to have. This is just... Amazing. We're going to have two brilliant teams going up against each other. All three of these have got a story about how they've got here and, you know, potentially winning that first six invitational. We've then got the inter-region thing. It's just kicking off an unbelievable day. If you're panicking a little bit about that angle looking south side and thinking, guys, there's nothing but a wall there. Why have they got a shield inside of the cubby? What they're actually trying to do is play behind it to challenge up towards Solo. We saw Bolo doing this the other day for TSM, interestingly. So FaZe are doing a very similar thing where you can play on either side of the shield, but it gives them the ability to challenge north side from that reverse angle shield because you're closer to the slits. You can see through them a lot better. It gives you that little bit of confidence. Geo's on the drum. No surprises there. Is he going to spot Souls? Yes, he is. Sees the man underneath the double window, forces Souls to move, and starts creating a little bit of space. Bolo not able to pick the man up. Yeah, just, oh, look oh. who does. It's going to be achieved. Finding Souls on the entry and giving TSM another advantage. And honestly, Des, they are threatening to run away with this. They are doing something better than FaZe were able to on the attack, and that is getting themselves inside the map, creating space for others to follow in, and taking control. Unfortunate, but good drone work coming out and a great pinch coming in from TSM overall to start off their attack inside. Merck, Achieve, sorry, now up to 10 and 2, by the way. Most of the entries have gone the way of Merck. He's been involved in those early engagements, but the mid round kills have really flown in favour of Achieved. Second, second opener for him. He's certainly not going badly. Mm. 
Paul's looking to continue this top floor push. I think the office wall has been open now. That's how deep we see Faze playing. They've been pushed all the way back in towards Solarium now. There you go. The wall is indeed open. Faze holding on well. We're sort of just over the halfway mark. One minute 40 gone. Toxic Babe Canister coming out. Just going to slow things down a little bit. But I don't think it's going to be long before they face mounting pressure from TSM here. And again, it's something that TSM are doing better. Is claiming some ground, pushing forward. Claiming more ground, pushing forward. Finding kill. Achieved with a second on the round. Five versus three. Top floor control now gained for TSM. Pressure going to mount inside a site for Face Clan. A very late C4 coming out of Astro as well. Going to find no one. Cyber left to stand up against the Horde. As a shotgun in hand, it's what you'd want in a zombie apocalypse, but maybe not against TSM. Bolo getting the trade. Achieve finds another 3K in the game. Tim, the man's 12 and 2 inside seven rounds. Cameraman, he's got to do it all. I don't think any amount of cameras are going to help him in this round either. A four versus one. With 30 seconds to play, he's going to get himself droned out. They'll hold some cross angles, and he is going to be done for. They're getting themselves a the hatch opened up as well, so they can look for the drop, but it's still more drone work for TSM, so being very disciplined about how they're approaching this. You've got Bolo coming down from the top side, and Nade's going to force Cameraman to move. He's down to a slither of HP. Bolo comes, and he wins out the one, and they walk away with another very dominating round. Tim, TSM are looking to storm on through to a 7-2 or maybe a 7-3. It's looking dangerous for Faze right now. Our Latam mm. fans out there must be a little bit nervous at what they are seeing because it's not just about this. You look towards Villa, you look towards the potential of Cafe and TSM just seem able to switch it on against this phase. I don't think anybody has made phase look as, as neutral, as negative as this, as passive. What I really don't want to see come out in this game is what we've seen a number of teams do throughout the competition. I tweeted about it yesterday. It's really weird how we've seen probably six or seven teams just bow out the competition with barely so much as a whimper. Yeah. Look at Furia. They were phenomenal. Finished first of their group, came up into their knockout game and basically just didn't show up to the races. Look back at Philippe Pox for MIBR yesterday, a player that many have gone, oh, top rated, put in on a show. These guys mean business. They're in the top six. They can do this. He goes one and nine in map three and just again, barely has a whimper on his way out. Out the back door so i don't know i'm just really hoping it's not a similar story for phase that's the last thing we need on a day like this but you've got, you got to look at some of the numbers right bullet and cyber you always speak about as being a massive duo bullet so far not present astro zero and seven it's just not looking pretty i wish i could paint a different picture des genuinely i do but I all i'll say is map two is villa and that is it's bot phases map phase map it is you know and and they're gonna they're gonna show the na-teams exactly what happened the other day you saw what super and bodega were saying to each other right yeah there's gonna be some there's slice a lot of back the and server. forth about not knowing <laughs> to play against latam on villa but tsm i just feel like there's the homework has been done i feel like they're gonna have an understanding of what's likely to be brought there whether they can have an answer to it or not is a different matter of ah course. the uncultured roni player of souls nothing wrong with the roni dmr's tim dmr's Round number eight. We're going to be going to Master and Office this time around. So it's going to be a top floor push from TSM. They're going to want to get themselves established inside a library. They've just shown us that they can do that very, very well. They're already out on the balcony looking to get themselves inside. It's going to be more of the same from last round. Phase for me, Des, they need an entry. They need a follow-up. They need a 5v3. They need to beat TSM up a little bit in this round to just give themselves something, a little bit of pep, a little bit of energy. What I love from TSM, and I've said this about a couple of LATAM teams as well, it really seems to be spreading amongst the top teams at the minute, is the pace and the urgency. Urgency is the key word that I keep on coming back to. For what, 40 seconds inside the round, you've got achieved up already, smashing floors open, doing work inside the map. That's overall really good stuff. And for teams that will sit there and drone for 75 seconds, then they'll step forward, then they'll get back on drones, they'll check it, they'll recheck it, and they'll check it again. They wonder why they only have 20 seconds left when it comes round to the execute. And that was something during most of last year, Empire was saying, oh, we always struggle with the clock because we'd be very unconfident in ourselves. We would drone the same spot four or five times and then move. You're seeing a very pacey Empire in the game or that you'll see later on that we saw yesterday and you're seeing it out of TSM. Bolo, big 2K, another entry coming out and GOR turns it into a third. Make it a fourth. Where are you, FaZe? TSM rolling through the LATAM team right now. There's 90 seconds left and there's nothing left for FaZe in the round. Another flawless coming through. These rounds feel like they are really taking the toll on Faze right <laughs> Ooh, A little there's, bit. <laughs> there's, there's no other way I can put it. That's three rounds in a row for TSM. Two of them have been flawless. 
this is a boulder that's just running downhill now. It feels like there's nothing Fears can do to stop it. The important thing here now is like, a little bit of triage, essentially. It's, you know, what can we do to start treating this wound? We ain't going to heal it now. It's very unlikely, I think, against this TSM side on Chalet that Fears take themselves into overtime. There's always a possibility. They're still in the server. They've still got guns. They can still shoot back. They're just not showing us that right now is the problem. And that early timeout may have come back to bite them a yep. bit, Tim, because I feel the longer this game has gone on, the worse and worse it's got. The more members they're losing in the round before a response comes through, or in some cases not finding a response at all. They just made it look easy there. Barolo planting his feet and finding a 3k at the top of library stairs. Three or four players swamping the one man left inside the end by himself. It just comes at such pace. Again, the round was over inside 90 seconds. That is ludicrous. You just feel fears need a couple of rounds here to give themselves a chance on Villa. It's more what it's about now. It's more about let's just get something. Let's get anything. What what can we take away from this that's going to be a positive? You know, even if they lose the map, but just have a big moment where Astro gets an ace or something. You know, just something absolutely big within a round that they can cling on to. It would be fantastic for them. They're going to be defending downstairs. It's going to be a whine and... Honestly, Des, this is not going to be an easy site for them to hold on to. I expect to see TSM do sort of similar to what FaZe did, which is get down there, open that West Main and Trench wall, look at trying to get to give Geo an opportunity to top those plant numbers up and get him inside a site with that case, get it put down. And it certainly looks that way. They're pushing in towards gaming to begin with and library site. So you want to clear that out. So you're not having to worry about blue too much and then start moving forward. But they're paying some attention to the main wall as well. So maybe it'll be a little bit of a different approach here from TSM. Yeah, Cozy moving away. That new jammer at the exact time they pull the go button and the breach is open inside 30 seconds, Tim. Meanwhile, you've got Merck trying to do his work on Trench. You clocked on last time round how fast FaZe managed to get in, get the plant down before TSM could really react on the other side. And even then, it came down to a one versus one. Bullet just on a little roam on the top floor there. It's going to be interesting to see whether TSM have picked him up or not. They really need somebody like Bullet to be coming in and just playing spoiler. Charla just droning out those main stairs, trench wall. So it looks there's, yep, like they are mounting for the sort of push that I was talking about. We've got achieved over there as well. By opening the main wall, there's nothing wrong with that. It creates difficulty for the defenders inside a site. It just cuts down even more angles from them. Look how aggressive Cyber's getting here. He's going to take a chunk of damage off Charla impressively quick nano boost coming in from Bolo as soon as that damage was done finds himself a yokai as well great work on that main entrance and look at what opening the front wall does you can see Faze spinning around on the spot there's they don't know which way to look and it just feels like they're being pulled from pillar to post by TSM here there's two of them watching down towards this main breach one kind of alternating in blue between the two so you've got two looking north side you've got two looking south side and cyber being that sort of flex player for you in a way TSM are in no rush they've got a minute and 15 still to play with they can just line up all their pieces here collect the information they need and then think about what the go button looks like they've got that mute jammer cleared off cyber is going to get a kill onto bolo though and that was the player on that main breach so it's going to allow phase to focus up a little bit more but bottom west main stairs wall has been opened that starts to cause a problem merc manages to find cyber and now tsm will look to get trench wall open as well the mute jammer was moved but they have to clear pillars once pillars is gone Fears have got a big problem, Des. Souls has to hold on here. They have got a cameraman who's just coming back down the lobby stairs. I think he was hoping to catch something else somewhere else on the map as they were trying to push down. Blue, for example, will have no such joy. Souls finding one onto Geo. It's looking better for FaZe Clan here as we get into the last 30 seconds. They know where TSM are coming from. They've ground to a bit of a halt here and aren't quite sure where to go next. They find the nade kill, but just after Bullet finds the kill onto Merc. So it's still not looking so good. A three versus two with 15 seconds to go. They've got to make a push happen. Astro finally getting himself on the scoreboard, gets himself traded. Charla in a one versus is two swung on by cameraman it's an easy closeout and phase do get one round tim but they still need three more they really needed that just to try and put the brakes on tsm a little bit try and get themselves back into it the problem at the end of the round there for tsm was that they just had one man short they needed three once you've got west main and trench open if you've got three even against a greater force on defense you can still achieve that site as an attack but when you've only got two you could see there the problem is on a trench wall 
achieved is then trying to watch two angles yep. because his man on West Main can't watch blue. So that's why you need three. You have somebody watching blue. You have your man on West Main watching down towards connector and you've got your third spare body who can go in and put the diffuser down. Achieved was having to watch both connector side and blue and it just made it a little bit too much for him to handle. Faze took full advantage. They knew that was the case. Quick peek out of blue. Absolutely not a problem. Get themselves the kill. And that was a much better defense from Faze than we've seen so far. There's one thing that made me really happy in that last round, Tim, and it's that we have a man of culture in the server. Do you know who it is? Who is it, Des? It's Cyber. Man of culture using the DMR. Well, I know that you are a big fan of the DMR. I mean, the very big damage single shot. They are ludicrous. Is what I will say. Ludicrous. Like 63, I was gonna say, shot on the MK14. Like 63, 64, you will it? basically kill everyone in two shots to the body, uh, except for three, well, three armors. You're calling three armors a bit weird, because it's less armor, it's more of like a HP stat. It's a HP base. stat now, yeah. yeah. It's still three armors, whatever. <laughs> Let's get into it then. Bar and gaming coming up next. This has been the primary site for most teams on this map overall. So not surprised to see FaZe stepping into there after a successful defense down in the basement. On TSM side though, Tim, they've brought the biggest go button of them all. They've got Merc playing on the Ying. Now, we've seen this employed a couple of times throughout the competition. Dark Zero, we've seen a Canadian making good use of it in the odd case or two. A few teams bringing it along for executes into the basement of Oregon, for example. But none that I can think of where it's like, man, they just completely steamroll the other team. So even with that operator in back pocket and able to make use of those candelas, I still want to see them being careful. We don't want Merck getting caught off the rip, for example. You can't be the go-to entry in this round. Achieved already on that library window. Bullet playing on Mezzanine. This is something that we saw TSM do extremely well. If you notice, Fears are doing it a little bit differently, Des. Well, three on the Don't road. think they've got anybody established on blue stairs. Nobody inside a library. Instead, everybody's over to master an office side. And that mm. might just leave Bullet a little bit exposed on Mezzanine. But saying that, I think somebody has now dropped Astro, themselves yeah. onto blue stairs. And that's going to be a big help. But here come TSM oh. straight into sight, Des. Merck gets one ball or gets one Merck. Another achievement. Surely this is over. Five versus one. It could be another flawless round to close oh, it out Mac. for TSM. And what a message the North American side are sending here on Chalet Cyber. He's looking Genius. for anything he can get. He knew there would be nothing. Charla finds the shots into the back. Third flawless round for TSM. And they take map one in quick fashion. What I love there is the intelligence and awareness being shown by TSM. They get the drones in, they identify, hey, there's only two on site. Boys, we can hit site right now. And Bolo, I said, I don't want to see Merc be in the entry. This time it was the Bolo hype train, baby. Charges into site, kills three people. And by then it's already too late for FaZe to think about getting back. This is why TSM on that same site only send one man to be off on the road up to the north. Otherwise you will get smashed on the site. I love the awareness being shown by TSM, the willingness to Say, right, boys, go. We're going to go fast, we're going to go hard, and look at the outcome. A very good first convincing map from them. And I know Villa wasn't their map pick, but they have played Villa a lot historically. I'm a little bit nervous for FaZe coming into it. I am. I don't, I don't think TSM are going to be scared at all. The Chiefs just come away 14 and 3, Des. That's absolutely ludicrous. Bolo Laughing. got 11 kills as well, 25 between the pair of them. They've just run FaZe ragged. It is as simple as that. FaZe now have to write that off. You know, they just have to write that off and say, right, Villa's our map. That's where we're going to win this. That's where we're going to bring this back. But I wouldn't want to double down on FaZe right now because TSM, they just looked on another level. I think about the game versus Empire, by the way. Uh, bear in mind, TSM got smashed on the first map, smashed back on the second, and the third one was a bit more balanced. Don't count FaZe out just yet. There is a reason why they are here as a top three team, and there is every chance they fight back on Villa. We'll go to a quick break, and when we come back, Villa awaits. Don't go anywhere.
TSM coming out guns, blazing, defeating FaZe, stomping them, to be honest. But I think, Ollie, you said that FaZe was going to win. It ain't looking too hot. My Ooh. NA boys, though, TSM. You're just smiling? What's going on over here? Oh, he's just... I'm, I'm getting the look from Jacob right now. Let's, let's be honest. It's uh -huh. not over till it's over. It's a best of three. This mm -hmm. isn't the best of one said and done. Mm -hmm. Just put your jacket away. It's... Oh. I mean, I don't know. Right. Some, so, so something about NA Pride. I, I mean, you know, <laughs> league that we work for, producing one of the best teams in the world, about to go right to the SI Grand Finals. Ooh. It just seems like it's all done and dusted Honestly, at that point. Honestly, this is the biggest curse you guys could have possibly done. You probably want to... It's, it's already oh. done. It's Can over. we just go already? <laughs> Jesse doesn't believe in curses, but um, I can agree with Ollie. It ain't over yet, but map one chalet, seven to three. That was rough. That was. I mean, y'all said off the top of the show, though, this was to be expected. We got the map summary up right now. So let's look at the stats. What are we thinking? I mean, we did already know off the top that this was going to be a weak map for FaZe just because of their recent results. TSM have really adapted to chalet. They liked it back when it first came into the NAL pool and they've taken it to task to make sure that this is their map in and out. And there were several times over the course of that game where it was flawless executes, flawless entries, sometimes shutting down face clan at the source on defense. It was pretty damn amazing. Yeah, TSM kind of running things right from the start. Those bands coming out, Nomad and Valkyrie, I think really helping them out there. The Valkyrie on defense, we didn't get to see a whole lot of that because face didn't get a whole lot of defensive rounds. But the Nomad in particular, I thought really was huge for them when they were going on for their defenses. Where do you even want to start with this? Do you want to start with Achieve 14 and 3? plus 11, a hundred percent cost. Oh my God. Look at Charla putting a shift in as well. A hundred percent cost. It was a nuts performance from TSM. They absolutely dominated that opening kill stat line. Someone you can really thank and look towards for that is Merc. He might be sat there at the bottom of the table, but this really goes to show how impactful kills can be. And Merc had four extremely impactful entries. And that's just following the trend of the tournament. Merc coming into this game had the best entry stat of any player in the entire tournament. He was 46 and 23, meaning a perfect 2.0 ratio, doubling the amount of opening kills that he's getting compared to opening deaths. That led TSM to be the best opening kill team in the tournament as well, 57% overall nuts, and they're continuing that trend. Yeah, Merc had a fantastic uh, series or game rather and Achieved had a standout game as well. Um, Ollie, you want to talk about Achieved's flank um, in particular. Let's see if we can roll that video that we have. Ooh. Yeah, let's have a look and uh, see just exactly how Achieved manages to do this. Now, we mentioned the Nomad ban earlier. That was a big, big old problem. The, uh, we, we cut that clip a little bit short there just to fit it in, but the problem that Achieved had, uh, sorry, the benefit that Achieved had is he had so much time. There was nobody inside of Piano. It's a play that Achieved does quite regularly, he likes to hang around over toward that side of the map, especially when his team's defending inside a bar. And that flank, it was beautiful. It was picture perfect. You sat and you're looking at FaZe and you're going, drones? Question mark? Like, is anybody on a <laughs> no, drone? That, like, they that was exist. The problem. Yeah. They're, they're, you know, no man buttons a thing, but drones still exist. There are old fashioned ways. Like, everyone's got headphones on, like, use the sound. Um, Do you guys not have drones? <laughs> Achieve. You've got to put <laughs> them on blast good. for it because it wasn't, it's not the first time that Achieve's got away with that. If you're going up against TSM, you should know that you're going up against a guy that loves a bit of a flank. Yeah. I, 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 I was very concerned overall, just the fact that that happened not once, but twice, probably even three times, depending on how that defense went for TSM. The Oryx play for Achieved never really seemed like it led up. He had top angles. He had excellent flanks at the right moment. FaZe Clan, for their own part, I don't really categorize as a bad droning team. They're probably one of the more creative teams on attack when understanding how to deal with an execute. They also decided, understanding after just the first three rounds, despite winning one of them, we got to pause. We, we'll, we have to put the brakes on this, see if we can call, like, call a time out, figure out what isn't working here. And still, they weren't able to do anything aside from what? It, it, it was one defense on basement, which again, NA teams have still not been able to do very effectively. And then another round that still very much felt like a 1vx performance. It doesn't really seem like FaZe, when they attacked on this map, had any steam in. Like, well, and, and bringing it back to that achieve flank, right? Because that was one where they actually did drone him. It's just they droned him like two minutes earlier and they droned him down in West Main. He went on a wild chase all the way up Solar Stairs, all the way through Piano to go for that flank that he was able to pull off. Off. And, you know, I can sometimes excuse a team for, like, missing such a crazy flank, right? Because, you know, that is maybe harder to grab. If you've already seen them below, maybe you don't expect them to go up above. But when I've spent the entire pregame hyping up FaZe Clan as the best attacking team, they can't be making these mistakes, especially not in lower bracket finals. Especially not on an attacker-sided map either. Yeah. Valid. Um, Jesse, I actually want to pick your brain about that a little more. FaZe, they took that early tactical timeout trying to stop TSM's momentum. Hmm. Do you think maybe they addressed their attack strategy there? 
because they did seem to adapt better. I think they tried. I think that we started off the first couple of rounds, the first two, three rounds, we saw FaZe Clan doing exactly what they did against MIBR. They were ignoring the roamers, and they were going for very site-focused pushes. But TSM were shutting that down so much better than what we ever saw from MIBR because they were going for big flanks, right? Obviously, Achieve, we've talked about a lot, but even Bolo in that round one, coming down library stairs, she should put a little bit of that pinch pressure on. It was something that MIBR never really could get a hold of against FaZe Clan. So after round three, they call that attack timeout, and you did see in round four, it seemed like they tried to adapt. They tried to move some more players over towards the roam clear, but it just wasn't working. Merc and, and Bolo and Achieved all on that roam game were just way too powerful, and it never ended up amounting to much for FaZe Clan. Okay, I want to move on to map two. Let's start looking forward here. Ollie, I mean, y'all singing the praises of TSM's Trinity. They were well-coordinated, composed. How does FaZe battle back on map two? Fortunately for FaZe, they are a pretty good team at Villa. And yeah, I make your case here. I want to hear it. That's <laughs> they're they're going to need to be a good team, right? Because we've already seen what TSM have brought today, and they didn't look like they were slowing down. They were jumping themselves out of windows. They were hitting nasty pre-fires. They were really dominant in that opening part of the game. And that's something that you can translate through onto Villa quite nicely as well. For all that FaZe have played quite a bit of Villa, and they've got a good success ratio on there, it again comes down to that how much backroom work has been done, how much work have TSM put in to really really understand and unpack exactly how FaZe want to play that. And when you have just been fairly well stomped on Chalet, you've got to hit that reset button fairly quickly. It felt like in the ban phase, just from maps, almost as though FaZe knew that the back half was going to be something they could rely on if the front half didn't work out. They had to ban a map that didn't work out for them in Coastline and then had to go to Chalet because where else was TSM going to go? They knew they were weak on that map. So overall, on Villa, this should be a way closer contest. Okay. Our teams are ready for map to Villa. Dez and Ace, take it away and let the lower bracket final continue. Let's go! Ah, ah. She makes so much noise. I love it. She's so... For, for those of you at home who wonder what Jackie's like off camera, She's exactly like she is on camera, if not more excitable, right? And it's been brilliant. I've got to, you know, thank you, Jackie. It's been a, a pleasure working with you this last two weeks. It has been delightful. But Tim, She's the, delight, the delight may end here for FaZe unless they can pull it back on Villa. And we spoke about, again, the map ban phase when we came into this one. We were off camera, but had a little chat about it before. I'm a little bit nervous. If it gets to Cafe, there's a world where they win. They are 5-0 and zero on Cafe at SI. But instead, they've gone to Villa, which has got a bit more of a mixed bag record, right? TSM have already played this map against Furia. They won it. They did lose it to Dark Zero. But this isn't a stranger map to them. They know how to play it. And it's the same sort of story for FaZe, where they played it a bit, but also lost it along the way. Doesn't feel to me like the go-to strongest pick. FaZe is going to win this map. There you go. Yeah, hello to this guy. You heard it here first. Faze are going to win this. We're going to go all the way to three maps. I can see it coming, Des. All right. It's going to be a war. Faze, for me, though, they've got to wake up quickly in this one. They cannot let them get themselves get behind because the problem is, even if they've got a bit of confidence on Villa, they've lost Chalet. If they are then two, three rounds down, it starts to become a real problem where you're thinking, we're only four rounds away from going out here. TSM start on defense. It's not ideal for Faze. They need to come in on the attack and really send a message here. Hmm, another Hibana ban coming in. Real hard targeting out against Geo today. That's two maps in a row. They've taken away his most played attacking operator. Interesting. Defensive side probably going to be something like, oh, okay. I see you with the Clash. That's a bit of a spicy one. As opposed to seeing, say, a Mira, a Valkyrie. You're going to see one of those two power picks on this map creep through. And that only benefits TSM in the first six rounds. Valkyrie going away. I'm curious to see, Tim, if Mira gets picked up on the majority of these sites. Because for TSM on this map, it can do a lot of work. I think about Aviator Games and being able to lock down study. I think about when you're defending Trophy and Statuary and can lock down Master Bedroom. It can really impede attackers and make their lives difficult. We'll see how the pick rate for Mira goes. At the mm. minute, not immediately in the lineup for TSM. May change during the sick pick phase. We will see. But trophy and statuary, it looks like, is going to be our round number one site choice. Charlotte goes for the flip over to the Frost. So there's not going to be any Mira brought along for trophy statuary. As you say, I think maybe Aviator Games are a little bit more likely, but uh, still not essential here. Charlotte, interestingly, sticking with that Frost, we saw it 
it have at least a big impact in one round on Chalet. There was mm. obviously, you know, more use for the operator, but there was that big round where Cyber was looking to get in on the behind, get in on the flank, and just poof, straight into the frost mat, snap shut, and ended it before it started. In one of the games TSM played on this map, the mirror was banned away. In the one that it was available, they played it in one of the few rounds they had on the defense. So we know it's in their wheelhouse, but for this round at least, on this site, it's not going to be part of the lineup. Instead, as you say, Tim, going in towards that frost. And I've said it a couple of times this week, by the way, whenever I see a castle, I'm like, oh, Summit Spicy's coming. And it could well be. Now I'm a bit like, oh, Geo's played. <laughs> <laughs> no, never mind. Castle Main, go figure. They're trying to lock down a little bit in towards the cubby side of things here, I think, just to give them a more, I suppose, confident angle to be able to challenge inside of the cubby itself, inside a bathroom. But by the same token, the most important thing it does is stop there being an angle from bedroom through the cubby wall that's now been opened up and into the bathroom. So the members of TSN can play a little more aggressively inside a bathroom, at least in the early round, and look to keep, I guess, phase kind of at bay, slow them down a little bit, give TSN time to rotate around. So all with the intent of saying, right, we've seen what Super endured against the Latam team on this map. How can we slow him down? Castle, not a bad pick. We've been seeing more of the aggression in towards Master Bedroom recently on the defences of Villas, particularly that shield being placed on the bed allows somebody to push up potentially through Concrete Door and really get aggressive up into Master. As long as you don't expose yourself to that window on the right-hand side, you're usually fine. Gio, he's going to find himself getting challenged here pretty soon. Turns away at maybe just the wrong time. It's the Arna clone first of all, but then it is being followed up. Nice and easy. How does Bullet walk into that when Gio, just a second before, has taken down the clone, but FaZe have an answer. Souls, Astro managing to find two. Cameraman gets in as well. 4v2 now. TSM going super hard on the roam and getting absolutely clapped down by the side of FaZe. Three kills to kick things off, and it leaves them in a four versus two with just under two minutes to play, Tim. That is bucket loads of time on this map. They've still got themselves six drones. They've still got themselves a ton of nades in back pocket, mate. That flashes, make it regular nades. You've got so much to play behind here. It's a lot of work for Merc and Achieve to do in the bat line here. Normally, the two that you'd see at the forefront of this team doing the hard yards. Instead, they got Charla, they got Geo out in the map, and so far, it hasn't gone too well for them. They've got to hold on here, Tim, for another 75 seconds or so, but I'd expect to see FaZe taking away this round. Merck's just going to take a little tickle of damage there. Nothing too serious, but needs to be careful. The nades continue to rain in. It was explosive damage that he took last time around. Big play from Achieved and gets caught on his way back in. Something FaZe have done well so far, Des, is able to get those trades, able to put, a, put TSM in just unwinnable situations. Souls starting to get that diffuser down. Pressure mounting on Merck. He's pretty much stuck inside of bathroom now but he's going to have to get moving because it's a 1v3 diffuser down and he's got about 30 seconds to find three kills here manages to find astro but can't quite spray him down takes a lot of damage himself and backs his way into a corner right now there's no way out for merc as phase they're not going to push this they don't really need to aggress it i think astro's just thinking about the pre-fire and the move gets the man and that's phase despite losing that entry coming in and getting round one on the attack i'm pretty sure astro in the first round of this map has already got more kills than he'd got on the entirety of Chalet. He was 0 and 9 for the longest time. I believe he picked up his first kill towards the back end of the map. So it's good to see them starting in different spirits. And this kind of feels like what we saw from TSM back on Chalet against FaZe, right? They were just barreling through them in rounds, slaughtering everyone that stood before them, barely giving the other side a chance. And that round really did look hopeless for the side of TSM. I'm not going to sit here and say Charlotte and Geo can't shoot. They absolutely can, otherwise they wouldn't be in TSM. But what I'd like to see a bit more of, Tim, is getting Bolo achieved a Merc in that front line. When they've been fragging out all tournament line, when they are your gunners, get them in the face of those entry players from the side of phase. Absolutely. You know, as I spoke about at the beginning, that's your core. And like you say, we're not, I'm not by that suggesting that Charla and Gio are the periphery players. You know, they're just playing a different game. The, the core three there are going out, getting kills, making the challenges to allow Gio and Charla to do what they do so well. Mm. And by contrast, Gio and Charla and what they do so well on the support and those sort of flex roles from Charla 
is facilitating those three in doing that. It works, it's perfectly symbiotic, and they just need to, to see a little bit more of that. It's early days on Villa yet, you know, but they need to, yeah. to be winning those gun facts if they're going to see it improve. Is look, the point. look how many impact nades are on the side of TSM here. They've got six in back pocket. That's enough to get yourself a full poke about poke balls. However, what they're looking for with that is denial onto the laundry wall. The thing is, FaZe haven't brought along a conventional hard breacher. They've got the Maverick. Now, sure, you can just yeet a bunch of those towards the hard breacher and hopefully kill him in the process, but they were hoping they were going to see something like the A-Cells being brought along or the Exothermics and the Thermite, because if so, you could clear those off. You can just keep on rotating through those impacts and the wall never gets opened up. So maybe slightly impeded by the setup here coming out of FaZe and could have been something FaZe are aware of. I've seen TSM do before. I want to make sure they can't get away with that same style of play again. Ball at the top of main stairs here. So TSM going to try to hold on to the top floor for at least a little while. Bolo dips himself away. We'll see just how far. Is he going to stop at red stairs or is he heading back down them? He's going to barricade off so it'll at least slow the progress of FaZe and it just acts as a little audio cue for him that he's being pushed. And he's going to try and hold on to the top of red stairs, I think, given that he's getting some goo mines down. Cyber manages to take down Achieved and that is one of those core three gunners that we've been saying need to find the feet quickly on Villa or they might just find themselves at a little bit of a deficit to the FaZe team. Feels like a showcase in so many of these games. Think about the best of three yesterday, Tim. The first two maps leaning one way or the other, really getting to see the strength of either side. And then it felt like that third map was the one that really went on to make a difference. Astro cruelly having his drone stole out from underneath his hands there as he reached out for it. Geo finding one back. A couple across the two rounds now. Not a bad start. Mert with a C4 as well. TSM starting to warm up in the round. However, FaZe, I've said it a few times, they don't need to panic here. They've still got 90 seconds to play. They've got a bunch of flashes on them as well when you look in the back pocket of Cyber, they can play into this because there is no anti-nade setup. There is no Wamai, there is no Aruni, there is no Jaeger. So as long as they time this well, get on their drones, use those flashes effectively, they will be able to find the kills they're looking for. Got Souls on the hunt, but he's going to be shut down with a big shotgun from Charla. And that is exactly what Charla does so well. Just providing that backline support to TSM and shutting down the man who was aggressing towards Cy Cyber. He's got himself into a little bit of a corner. It's going to be Charla. It's going to be the shotgun. It's going to be a second on the round. And TSM are able to level things up in Dining and Kitchen. Really came back with a fight there as well. TSM, four, left, four players left alive at the bitter end of it. Really only losing achieved inside of Living Library. Outside of that, it was just the TSM tail from start to finish. A good round and a good way to fight back into things. That being the offside is never going to be a bad thing either. Now we step across into trophy and statuary. So back where we were in round one, where TSM did, being quite frank, get absolutely slammed. So hopefully here there's a small change in who's playing where. We've made the call for Merc Bolo achieved to be the ones meeting the aggressors into the building rather than your supported players. And hopefully it works out a bit better. Round number three is going to see us heading back to Trophy and Statuary for TSM. I mean, it went wildly wrong in round one, Des, if we're honest. Yep. Um, for they got the opener, and that was about all that TSM got out of this site. So they're going to need to do something different. For me, it's particularly the impact on the roam that they need to be finding. They lost a lot of the gunfights. They lost a lot of men very, very quickly last time around as FaZe were able to cut them down. The problem for TSM that faces them at the minute, you feel like if FaZe get 3 all. I'm then really weight this in the favour of FaZe to take it on defence. Quite possibly so, yeah. Again, knowing they can sit behind that mirror if they want to in the second half. Once again, no anti-nade utility coming out for the side of TSM, just really not in their wheelhouse, despite the six frag grenades that have been brought along by FaZe in a couple of these rounds. Round one, round three, the last one there were a couple less, but not like it made all that much of a difference. Still got rolled over with four members of TSM being left on their feet. There is a bit of a change here because what you are seeing is Merc, and it was achieved for a second, looking to do the roam down towards the south. Charla is dug in on the smoke up towards the north, but you've still got Geo out here looking to get busy. Merc still just putting those corner stations down as the final touches to the preparation are completed. And FaZe, they're well underway on trying to get themselves inside of the map here. I like to see this better aggression from them. They were a little bit slow at times on Chalet and a little bit tentative. But now getting in there, getting the nades in, looking to get the boots on the ground behind it. Achieved and Geo holding on to the study side a little bit harder this time. We saw Geo inside of games. He managed to get himself the opener, but... 
Bears oh. were able to play into it a little bit more. Sneaky, but sneaky. Bears looking to maybe go for a little bit of route one here, Des. Uh, this is route one, mate. This is... Uh, <laughs> they're taking the maze here, I think. It's not when you go to some weird, like, outdoor adventure place and you've got to walk through a hedge maze. They've got to find their way up through the bowels of Villa. And here they come. The juice is up. And Bolo's the first one to greet them. But Astro, with that extra bit of juice, keeps himself alive. That's where you're seeing the strength of those finger boosts. But he dies out to the smoke of Charla as he steps forward. Cyber is in position to come moving up just as soon as this smoke has expired. And achieved, I think, once step in here and get his teammate up but doesn't want to risk it cyber finding him from below a three versus two for phase and geo and achieve to do it all interesting little bit of game mechanic that we don't often see there too often does finker does take more damage from the smart canisters when boosted apparently by the it's nanobots. not a huge amount you just not die, a huge you, amount you die one tick sooner exactly it's quicker and already having taken damage it was too much for astro to deal with and gets shut down obviously the theory there being that your breathing's a little bit quicker so achieved just trying to hold Hold on to angles, knows that the push is coming in through Astro. Faze have got themselves established. They've just slowed down a little bit. Nothing wrong with that. They've just taken the foot off the gas. They've got the ground that they need. They've got some space. Let's try and find the final men achieved, however. He's going to be the one to find somebody first, taking a headshot onto Faze, and it's another one of those kills exactly when TSM need it. Leveling it up two to two. Two Whoa. versus one. Achieved again oh, on the triple, on the quad, on the win for TSM in round three. Achieved is just unstoppable right now. It's another big 4K, just like we saw back on Chalet. This could be the series that really defines Achieved and TSM's journey towards finally lifting that hammer after so many years of coming so damn close. They get the win on Trophy and Statuary from a behind position. They were two versus three. Either way, a round on the board is a round on the board. We step into Aviator Games, the go-to site on this map for most teams. But TSM have kind of avoided it, take a little detour, sidestep their way around this site, and now finally we'll go to it in round number four. <sighs> Fears have got to be worried a little bit by now, does. I think the rounds have been closed still. I'm yeah, not, they have. Well, except for round two. But as I said, if you, not. when TSM start getting on to four and five rounds, the problem for FaZe is it becomes a big mental game then because you're a couple of rounds from going out. And that's, no matter how good you are on a map, no matter how well you are gunning, mm. that is going to impact on you. You've been here for two weeks, you've been grafting, you've been you know, working night and day on this, and you're all of a sudden a couple of rounds, not just from going, but from going inside of two maps, not the way that they would want it. Just worth noting again, because I touched on it at the moment it happened, when Astro took that entry engagement onto Bolo and had the juice coming out of the Finca, that kept him alive. He was down to sub-20 HP once that firefight was said and done. And this is another thing I've kind of chatted to a couple of coaches about, is the meta that we're in right now, what problems do you see? And a few have said, and many of the kind of community feel the same way, gone sixes on operators like Iana, Finca, for example, just a little bit too strong. But the real strength comes in one, LMGs, and two, in things like the ARX. As soon as you are juiced up and you're taking an entry fight on, you know, an extra boosted amount of HP, you're getting dropped down to, say, 50 HP, or in Astro's case, down to about 15, you stim yourself again afterwards, and before you know it, you're back to near full HP and ready to go again. Entries with super powerful guns or LMGs that can fire for seemingly ever, an extra padding bit of health makes them really obnoxious to deal with, and this is why if attackers are going fast and rapid and really hitting you hard, it can be hard to get a kill back the other way. So don't suddenly be alarmed that Bolo is like Samson and has lost all of his ability now that his hair's been cut or something crazy along those lines. No, he can still get those kills. You are just struggling against very powerful guns behind essentially big bullet sponges on the attack inside. Exactly that. Geo and Achieved playing around Red Stairs. Going to need to be moved, and obviously they're in position to try and slow down any push from the north side, which is exactly what we're seeing at the minute. Achieved just holding himself a nice little vertical angle, but I think Faze are aware of it. Achieved's actually dropped himself away all the way down to the basement now, and that might just keep him alive, because I think Cyber was just on the hunt there as he was moving underneath, but Achieved oh. might just be able to work his way up behind him here, Des. Cameraman's down, and this is not looking that great for Faze, depending on what happens with this push from Achieved. Achieved. That was a C4 out the window, I think, coming out of Merc there as well, that put him down. Has got himself tucked in tight against the building, so it's a little bit harder to finish him off. Astro, not too far away. Could have just juiced him back to his feet, to be fair, but has worked all the way around. Achieved, finding out Cyber, a four versus four. Geo down on the other side, losing that one right early. Not super ideal against six, well, four frag grenades now that the sledge is gone. But still, not the end of the world, but still not ideal. Achieved doing great work from the basement there, able to rotate up and catch Cyber out. Cameraman has been collected. So that puts us There's back to a four versus four. 
Just going to get himself up to the rooftop for the time being. Faye's really slowing down here, does it? Feels like this early bit of aggression, the loss of cyber, cameraman being down. It's just taken the wind out of the sails here in round four. Utility going in. We've got clearance going on around Map's table as well, but Bullet not really too sure where the utility is. He's scanning around. He's not finding anybody, and he just ends up opening a vertical angle up, and it doesn't really gain him too much. Souls is in a position here. He knows that he's clear to get this down behind Vault Wall, but potentially kill's going to be needed first. Oh, Achieve coming up here behind Astro and Red as well. Oh, but Astro wins out the fight. That's unfortunate. Disorder 2 coming in for a bit of an engagement there, but with no utility on site, FaZe can start thinking about that push. You haven't got Achieve on the downstairs anymore with the C4 in back pocket to deny you going for a plan, so it's all about going in for the execute. In they step. Charla still in a position where he could look to help challenge onto this one, but he goes down in the trade. Merc gets one in as well and nicks it away. Astro's got a strong arm his way in. You've got to get the Yana in at the same time. In they come. Bolo can win one swing. Yes, he can, as Merc finds the other. They get the shutdown, and that Vault Door peak coming out with the shotgun was more than enough to put FaZe in the bin for that round. It was well played by TSM. The thing is, on the side of FaZe, you pretty much know that's the only place a challenge can come from when you're planting in behind the vault door. That's the only place you got to cover. And there just wasn't anybody there who was able to contest that. There was. There was Charlie versus Bullet, but the instant trade came in and Astro just wasn't quick enough to step back up no. and take his position. I think he was off watching 90 getting ready for a flank. And you had the Yana versus the Bolo down inside a study. They were kind of watching each other, seeing who made the move first. It was the Yana and Bolo came in for the swing. So brilliantly played by TSM in the end of it there. Merc being the shotgun hero they were really looking for and almost getting them the entry in the round. I said it in the last game, I'll, I'll say it again now. TSM are just on another level at the minute. I, I don't even think this is necessarily down to FaZe's performance. It's, what do you do? What yeah. do you do? How do you stop them? Against a the team like this right now. You know, FaZe, they're trying different things. They're trying to adapt. They're trying to be flexible. They're going in for gunfights. But they just can't get anything going. They just can't get anything done. And, you know, we've seen teams there time after time. And for TSM right now, it feels like they could just, you know, take a one shot through a barricade and possibly kill somebody. Everything is just going right for them. It's very easy to say when we've seen him play well across the two maps so far, but throughout the tournament, one player that you don't really get a lot of appreciation for players like this sometimes, and I guess with the 4Ks it has really helped, but Achieve being a sledge player, you go about doing your business and you kind of not really noticed. I think the consistency in which he has performed with at this competition, I know he's not in the top five in any kind of stat, you won't always be as the sledge slash flex player, but he is really, really impressed with this competition. He has done before, but never as consistently as he has here. We've discussed it throughout. We've said, you know, he's not necessarily bringing the flashy kills. It's not necessarily three kills inside of five seconds. It's not at the top of every leaderboard, but it just doesn't matter because what he has done is propel his team to being within four rounds of the grand final because he's been so essential to them and such a solid core. And I'm sure it's going to continue. It's going to be something that Empire need to consider when they go forward. Cameraman just uh, taking a cautious backward step there. I think there was a cap can on the door frame, so not wanting to get himself too aggressive. Knows exactly where Bolo is. Still going to lose it on the reverse. Not that it matters because elsewhere they've lost two members of their own. You know, it's it's so painful when you feel like they're finally getting something going and then you lose two like that as well. Cyber's down, Super Astro's down, a four versus three again. And what's crazy, Tim, is this is Villa. It's a pretty big map, but everything is happening inside the first 90 seconds. I feel has been four or five times so far throughout this map. I've turned around and said, oh, okay, it's a two versus three. It's a three versus three with 90 seconds still to play. The teams are just hitting each other with pace, but the thing is, where the Sonics may have struggled to deal with that aggression against the LATAM team, TSM are just like, we got you, fam. We can trade this back. No issue at all. That's it. And as you say, you know, you pick it up quite right, Des. It's been in the early rounds that we've seen all this action because FaZe are trying to get it going. They are trying to get themselves inside of the map. They're not playing scared, but they're just losing gunfights. And it's going to start oh. taking its toll mentally on them before long, I've no doubt. Cameraman, he's going to find Achieved. And that is a big kill Good to level ball. things up four versus three. He hasn't completed it yet, but... I think when the challenge doesn't come back in, he'll have a good idea that the man is down. He'll finish him off, and that levels things up. So, FaZe, you've got an opportunity here. You're attacking onto dining. Top floor control is pretty much yours. Merc does no longer have a C4 in hand, neither does Charla. You've got yourself the kill onto the roaming pool. Or FaZe, they've got to push on and find this round. I mean, he's on a quad. Surely you win the whole thing out now, Charla. The only man that stands between FaZe and another round winning between cameraman and an ace. 
about 40 seconds to play with Tim. It's so much time on the clock. Sol steps in, loses out the 1v1. Surely he can't clutch it up too big here. Cameraman steps in, sees the man, but Charla wins it out. What a clutch. And this is what I'm saying. Fizz, you're not doing anything wrong. You get yourself a 4K on cameraman. You're looking for an ace. What does Charla do? 1v2, what's your problem? And that is TSM's answer. Not every time, but the point is they have the answer every time. No oh. matter what is happening, no matter what Faze managed to do, no matter what Faze managed to get going. And it doesn't matter which member of the team it is. I know that I'm like just completely going like soft over TSM, just going absolutely wild, but they've just been that good. Cameraman had a 4K, Tim. That was his redemption arc. That was his way back into the series after a really quiet map. One of thought, surely he swung round. He's dealt with a flank in Bolo. They're in a two versus one, and Charla. Oh, it's unbelievable. Him and Gio have done that a few times throughout this competition. Bringing down this front three. I feel like I'm talking about a football team. When this front three from TSM are out of the picture, when Merck achieved and Bolo are no longer a conversation, in several situations, Charla and Gio have been there and they've won out critical rounds. Think about Gio's one versus two on the castle in bank open area. Think about Charla in that round just now. You're going to see that time and time again, and that is what makes this team so terrifying to deal with. Yep, it really does. It's like you, you deal with the front three, you think you've got the job done, and you've got one of the, what has been the strongest back lines in the Six Invitational 2022 to go up against, and they are just locking it down time after time. That's the second time that we've seen Charla have that, side, that kind of finish here on Villa, and he just doesn't feel like stopping anytime soon. It's going to be the final defence this time around in round six from TSM Trophy Statuary. They will be trying to hold on to. We've seen them already defending this site. They lost it once, back in the first round. It's the only round that FaZe were able to pick up. So maybe they can get something here, Des. 4-2, not the worst on Villa when you're on the attack, but it really feels like I'm starting to try and scratch for positives for FaZe here, <laughs> if I'm honest. I mean, the, the strongest they've looked is cameraman's 4K. That is, even that got shut down by TSM, right? Outside of that, they've all been getting involved. They've picked up the odd kill here and there. But the odd kill isn't good enough against a team like TSM and the caliber with which they're playing today. It's, it's unbelievable. And I'm really struggling to see how they find anything in this sixth round because even when they've had the numbers advantage, TSM find a way back in. Let's see how things go up towards the north side though. Yes, Souls is down to about 40 HP. It's far from the end of the world. The only thing that can really complete this out now is another cat can trap being jumped into and more HP being chunked away from another member of FaZe. And hopefully that's not going to be the case because FaZe desperately need a round here. They need a big start. They need an entry. They need to get themselves that advantage. Nade comes in, just forcing Merc away from his aggression onto the door there. But right now you just know that TSM are going to find another way to do it. And there it comes, Merc. He just flips himself to the other side of the wall. He gets one. He gets two Des. And that is going to be Bullet and Souls shut down. And FaZe, they just look like they're in free fall at the minute. That Vector's lethal, Tim. We interviewed a couple of players is about it. Fastest gun in the game can be a nightmare at the best of times. Cyber finds one back. Cameraman another. So the two backline players from TSM have been removed. But you've got the man who's on a mission in this round in Merc. He is still standing. In comes Bolo. One back the other way. A three versus two. Shots come in. Merc manages to take the head off of Astro. Three versus one. And another for Merc. TSM. They know that the blood is in the water. Dares this circle in. And they are ready to take another bite after bite after bite out of phase right now. And there's just no response. We spoke about teams limping out. It's starting to feel like that for FaZe. Just not quite playing with the same aggression that we've seen before. They've made an attempt a couple of times here, but TSM, where others have failed, have adapted and dealt with that aggression coming in. And this maybe is where you're seeing a couple of limitations for FaZe. They can't find a way around that roadblock. They can't adapt. They can't find the secret source to get over the finish line. Canadian famously said the Bolo couldn't buy around him, but maybe here they bought their way into a grand final with a delivery like this. Certainly looking that way, taking anything that they want at this point in time. Fizz, I still believe, like many others sat at home who I know will believe as well, Fizz clan are still 
capable of doing this, but they have very few mistakes or opportunities left. This is your moment. You've got yourself onto the defence of Villa. Attack hasn't worked out for you, but you're going to have to go very, very well, and they're going to start us off down in dining. What the viewers at home don't know is the whole time you were saying you still believe, you were just undoing your shirt, and all I saw there was a TSM jersey starting to appear. I know where your allegiance is lie. None of those games today. <laughs> dining and kitchen is where phase are going to start exactly the same as we saw coming out of TSM. Now, between the two sides, differences you're seeing. The Mozzie coming in for Cyber. On the other side, you've got that Nomad stepping back in. That was banned away in the last map, and we touched about if it's missing for the side of FaZe, can we sort of really sting them on Chalet? Here being available with Gil will give TSM a bit of confidence they can focus on their way forwards. And the most scary thing is, Tim, you've got the boys on their main three. You've got Achieved on the Sledge, Bolo playing on the Finca, Merc on the Iana here. You just know they're ready to go absolutely nuclear on this lineup. And you sort of feel like they're probably going to. And Faze, they're going to have to withstand a hurricane here because TSM are two rounds away from a grand final rematch against Team Empire. I mean, the storyline writes itself, Des. Not only is it two teams that have been fighting to get there or to get back to the final for a long time, it's also the EU NA showdown oh. as well. Oh, <laughs> give it to me! But Faze... They've still got something to say about this. I know that they've got the potential. They've got it in the tank, Merc. He's taken in that opening challenge. He'd been boosted up by the nanobots, so he's not going to lose any HP overall from that fight. It's just a little bit of a trade, a little bit of a back and forth, and they will dip back. Cyber looking to find his man. Now, interestingly, they've actually got the ground that they need of TSM here. They've got the space above the site. They can start opening things up, but they're not safe because the flanks are going to get hassled from this south side. They know that they need to deal with FaZe over there. The real heartbreaker, I guess, when you think about it for TSM, they've been top four at the last two SIs as well. Is this the one, a third time lucky, that they finally get to lift? Well, they're top three now, so they've got one better at least. Uh, the matching where they were, they could fall short here and it would still look a bit dicey, but Merc finding the entry again, he's an absolute demon. I mentioned coming in, he was plus 23, Cyber was plus 10. That was the closest the two teams were. And the longer the series has gone on, the more Merc has just buried Cyber and not given him away into the game. Astro, he's moving his way back to site here, and that's good for TSM. Yeah, drones, though. Only one left, by the way, for TSM, so they are a bit light on the info game. They are. They're going to have to work their way in blindfolded here. But right now, I wouldn't put money against TSM getting kills blindfolded, Des, if you nope. actually blindfolded them on the stage, because everything is going their way. Gio manages to find souls. Five versus three now, and TSM are racing towards a map point opportunity. They've got 40 seconds left to get the work done here in round seven they haven't yet cleared outside they're not in a position necessarily to get this diffuser down so there is still more work for them to do phase they start standing up diffuser. cameraman he finds geo and finds the diffuser astro comes out to try and support this is going to be very difficult for tsm to recover and they've only got 20 seconds left to do it in goes bolo is he going to get the kill yes manages the spray down and once again tsm win what looks like an unlikely gunfight charla in getting astro. the diffuser down it's all up to Astro 1v4, surely not, surely it will be too much. He finds one, he finds two, gets the down, but the diffuser is secured. Astro 1v2 and kills to find. Achieved on the upstairs is the problem here. I mean, Bolo sure has now darted down into the, blaze, into the basement, but he's being contested from above, from below. They haven't even got to worry about this. Like Astro needs to do a top floor retake. He's got to get rid of Achieved. Can't find him. Of course he can't. It's Achieved. Puts them one round away from a chance at lifting that hammer against Empire, Tim. And you know that'll be a grand final for the ages. FaZe, they've got a long hill to climb if they want to get themselves back into this game. Sure, Empire are going to be watching this with caution, Des. Whew. No way. I mean, they played yesterday. Look how good that series was, Tim. And it's going to be even better because it, TSM feel like they're at the best that I've seen them at the tournament here and now, in honesty. They've really brought it at the right time. They have come in. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to say, I don't think FaZe have really lost this. TSM have won it. Yeah. You know, 
they've just come in and dominated every angle, every nade, every explosive, every strategy, everything about the game, TSM have just completely and utterly dominated. FaZe, you've got a mountain to climb. You've got beyond a mountain to climb. This is this is not Everest. This is like nothing seen on Earth, Des, to bring it back from this point. They are three minutes away from going out, from losing here in Sweden and TSM progressing. I was just going to say, we haven't seen a timeout from FaZe on this map, so are they really going to like not call one all the way up to the end? They call it when the death bell's already ringing to him, when the Grim Reaper has turned up, ready to take his victims. That is when they call their timeout. Having a quick pause, saying the final prayers, maybe because it feels like there is going to be no way of stopping TSM coming into round number eight. AVG going to be where FaZe set up what could be their last bastion against the North American team, Tim. Can they do it? The next three and a half minutes are going to tell all. One round at a time now, FaZe. One round at a time. That is all that you can focus on. You've got to forget the hammer. You've got to forget the six invitational. You've got to almost forget about TSM. And you just have to play your own game. And you need to just take every inch that you can, no matter what it needs, in order to do it. FaZe, as you say, holding on to Aviator Games. Bullet's going to move himself down underneath. He's playing on the mirror. And he's going to use some of that utility to try and hold on to that bottom floor. Nitro in hand, also a Nitro on the side of Astro as well, so there's going to be a lot of potential there for vertical denial. Waste some time for TSM. What I'm concerned about here is TSM just sweeping through that bottom floor des like a torrent and just washing phase out of there. What I'm thinking here, if TSM have opted to ban away the Valkyrie, they are comfortable in a way that they can deal with the mirror. And when I look at that, I think, okay, you've got the Nomad on side. Really, you're going to have the Valkyrie set up to deal with flanks, to give the information for flankers to make their moves. If you can lock off those flanks in a way that doesn't require you necessarily to have to deal with the Valkyrie, then I thought maybe we'd see that come through. But instead, probably saying, look, we can deal with it from above. We can play the verticals. We can get nades in. So either way, they've just gone, look, well, we're not, we're not really bothered by either, but if we have the choice of one or the other, it's going to be the Valkyrie that gets removed. Achieved is already inside of the map, holding angles. Cyber just it's above him was the nade, but just made him move his feet just in case. Not sure if he was being pushed. I don't know if TSM are aware of Cyber's position here, but they certainly need to be because he's looking to get aggressive onto this window. And I think that answers that question, Des. Charla able to shut him down. Achieved was on the push along with him as well. And this is what I was worried about for FaZe, that TSM just come in and sweep through that lower floor and bullet. He's taken some damage. He finds himself oh, almost all read. alone, but... Oh, on to Souls, five versus three, and TSM, they are taking one step at a time towards that grand final, Des. Uh, what do you do, Tim? You sit still, they come and run over you like a train. You have two swings on them, Cyber and Souls both going for a small slow peak to try and bring down the members of TSM that are outside the building, but they're already watching and ready, showing that TSM can move between that more patient waiting game for FaZe to move at them, or they're happy to play fast and hard hitting and run you over like a steam train. In comes another, it's Merc onto Cameraman, and this feels like the final breaths of a FaZe team that has run its race right now. The legs of Gondes, it is too much. As Achieved finds Bullet, it's one versus five. The whole the hopes of Latam rest on Astro's shoulders right now, and he is opening rotations. He's desperately moving, he's trying to do anything he can, but there comes the final kill, and it's a flawless round at the end of a flawless performance from TSM, who will return to to NA as heroes, regardless of the outcome of the next map, because they have got the region back into the grand final of the six Invitational. TSM have looked phenomenal all tournament long, but that, that is a performance of champions, Tim. I know what we said about Empire, that they'll come into that saying, oh, we feel ready, we beat them yesterday. Nothing is going to prepare you for a team that looks this good. Barely dropping around against FaZe, a team that just three months ago were the best team in the world. I can't wait for this grand final. It is going to be a screamer between Empire and TSM. Across two maps, FaZe were only able to secure four rounds, Des. Four rounds. 14-4 is the overall score there. And what I've, I've honestly, I gotta just take a bow to TSM because that was a masterclass. And I hope they can deliver the same quality in the grand final. They've got plenty of time. They've given themselves extra time now to turn it around and get themselves ready for that big best of five later on in the day. They can have a little bit of time to relax. 
What an unreal performance from the North American side. Love to see it. That last round for me really summarized it as well. Go slow, go fast, put the brakes on, hit the accelerator as and when ready. They just looked fearless the entire way through. Absolutely magic stuff, and I keep on saying it, but it's really true. This is going to be one of those grand finals, I feel, that goes down in history. It has been something special from start to finish. It has, and it's going to be something that the players at TSM remember for a long time, I'm sure. They're not going to be reflecting on it too much right now because all of their thoughts are going to be turning towards that grand final. They are going to be looking pretty focused in the next half an hour or so and aiming towards that. Not forgetting as well, it's a pure best of five. There is no map advantage for Empire going into it. It starts 0-0 and we can go all the way through to five, which will spark a question. Have they got the stamina? Seven, potentially, well, there will be seven grueling maps. They've got to play their way through on the biggest stage there is. This is not just a test of can you play Siege well, because that has been answered, but can you last? That one remains to be seen. You quoted a stat at me earlier, Des. The question I've got for TSM now is, can you be part of the 8%? Absolutely. That's me and Tim Dumcaster near this event. But let's get over to the stage where we're going to have Bolo talking to Seltzer.